Apple says what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone and they've got a big new beautiful campaign claiming they're a privacy company. We're going to talk about that. Hello from Detroit. Together with Joel, I am Brad, and we are coming at you today with a fantastic episode um, evaluating the campaign for Apple. Yep. So, so Apple's I, now a privacy company, Brad, did it, you know? It's a privacy company that we know? all wear very closely to our body, although I should say most of us have <laughs> an Apple very close to our body, and no, I'm not talking about your Adam's Apple. Um, no, all right. No so one thought that. Terrible that jokes. Serious. Aside, let's let's <laughs> let's just dive into this. Okay, so uh, like Joel said, uh, Apple now is telling the world that they are a privacy company. Uh, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, has decided to write an essay in Time Magazine um, talking about the virtues of privacy and what Apple is doing. By the way, let me repeat that. He has written an essay in Time Magazine. <laughs> so, <laughs> that no one will read it. <laughs> that's right. That would have been a fantastic He's, He is move keeping his essay in 19, private. 92. By, <laughs> by publishing it in Time Magazine. I'm a little confused why someone <laughs> so smart would do that. But So I know you have a lot of thoughts on this. Can I share my reaction to when Apple came out with this campaign? Just Please. My, my, and it, was, it was fascinating because I, I just read an article in The Guardian and then you had actually sent me that Twitter link or that that Twitter post yes. where they're rolling. Which we'll out, get into in a minute. Which we'll get into in a minute. Anyway, so my initial reaction was the the phrase I swear to God the phrase that I had was rank opportunism. That was all. Where it's like, are you kidding? And like, look, right. I don't. I've I've I have bought into the Apple ecosystem. Like I I never had Android. I went from BlackBerry to Apple and then right. like now I'm in it, I'm in it and I know that I'm never getting out of it. They're gonna have to do an awful lot wrong before I ever get out of there because my iTunes and I mean all, right. everything, it's worked, I they did it. But then when they're like, they're a privacy company, I'm like, bollocks. They're, no, you're not. <laughs> like, let's just stop. Right, right. You're not a privacy company. Privacy doesn't matter to you. I've given you all this information about like this is just rank opportunism and you're not doing anything other than kicking Facebook while they're down. And yep. I'm not opposed to that. Have at it. Enjoy. Right. But like let's not like you this just smacks of sanctimony and you're and it's just it is opportunism to kick another company. And like, but don't pretend. Like no. do not pretend. So that was that yes. was my initial yes. reaction. And I think judging by some of the comments on their initial Twitter post. That was very common. Now, the Guardian article that I just read was all about this. Like, of course, phone companies don't listen to your conversation and place ads. However, the vast majority of us have had a situation where we're explicitly oh, yes. talking about something. We've never searched for right. it. We've Which never is not Googled part of it. our general it's persona. But we're talking about it and yeah. we get an ad for it. And, and, and I mean, it's happened to me multiple times. And so there was some article in the, in, in the Guardian that was explicitly about that. It's like, come on, like I, we know right. that the phone companies have all sorts of answers for this, but like, how would it ever know to serve me that ad based on my previous history? And it just so happened only after I'm talking about it. Right. That, and, and, and they would say, no, there's no way that we could ever process that kind of data and like the upload of like audio to process that and to serve that. There's no way we could do it. And that makes sense, but still it's happened to us. Right, like right. it still happens that we get served this ad. So like, uh, don't tell me you're all about privacy. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, privacy is a huge concern for the entire tech ecosystem. Yes, it's been worse for Google and for Facebook recently. Mm -hmm. Apple has not been kicked as much and mm -hmm. part of it comes down to there there's two ways to look at it one is the the positive way to look at it which is no apple's really smart their goal is to process as much information locally on the iphone as possible and that gives them a strategic advantage mm -hmm. the the not so friendly way to look at it is like look steve jobs years and years ago had a debate with Waz, which he won where he wanted everything in the ecosystem to be controlled so it could actually be sold to the marketplaces having it be open open source system and they're reaping the benefits of that in a 
in another way here, which is be able to claim more privacy because they own more of the data and then they can do whatever the hell they want to with right. it is what the, what the concern is. So look, Apple, you know, kudos to them. They're smart. They recognize there is an issue right now around privacy. They know they need to be leaders in it because of the network effect where everyone has Apple surrounding them and Apple needs to make sure they're staying on the cutting edge. So they've run a campaign recently where uh, they had a series of tweets where they partnered with Verizon somewhat and talking about the iPhone was security, um, the exact, um, I forget what the exact message of it, but the whole, pre the, whole, uh, the whole message was, oh, here we go. Your privacy matters. That's why every iPhone is designed from the ground up to protect it. And it's like, that seems like an odd thing to really be able to believe in and of itself. Yeah. Kudos to Apple. They ran a campaign you know, throughout March Madness as well. It's good ads. It is good, you know, and they've, they've created a link between privacy and the Apple brand by doing some small things like, hey, we're having a conversation. The server comes up. We stop talking. Um, gentleman walks into the bathroom to, you know, follow nature's calling. And rather than choosing a urinal adjacent to someone, he goes, or down, you show a beware of dog, like these tiny, tiny security things. And then they start to talk about how Apple is all about security. Um, at CES, they, you know, Joel did the intro at the beginning of this video. Uh, what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone with a link to Apple's privacy. So they're making a big push on this overall, which I think is smart. It's timely. People need to feel safe with Apple. but. But this it's, strategy but it isn't like enough for 2019. It's, it's not enough. So what, yeah. do, what do they need to do? Let's, let's, let's hammer this out. What, like, what they're doing is fine, right. but it's, it is necessary but insufficient. Agreed, agreed. So what do they need to do? There's, there's a lot of different things they could do. Um, first thing is, it's the most obvious, um, is to have a third party expert be many, involved. Yes. Many, many, yeah. many third party. This, this is what falls flat for me, is you do not, you Apple do not understand how big of a claim you're making. Mm -hmm. Because you have a jaded population that doesn't believe corporate America, especially around privacy, because we've, we, we've given up. Like, we can't get the things that we want and, and, and interact with modern society without giving up our privacy. Like, you just can't do it. Right. So we've, we've acquiesced to it. Sure. Like, we've been cowed, we get it. Our stuff is gone, but don't tell us like, don't, don't tell us that. Right. And if you're going to tell it's us. Patronizing it's patronizing almost. Totally, it is. <laughs> you got to understand how big of a hill it is you've got to climb. And if throwing some cleverly produced ads up at March Madness, it ain't going to do it, kid. No. You, you got you to, gotta, like, you really, really have to take this seriously. And that's your point. A lot, a lot of third-party validation. So what's that look like? For sure. No, I mean, look, we talk about influencers a lot, but there is a reason why they work. And 92% of Americans trust what influencers say uh, when compared to what brands have to say. Right. So even if Apple is right, and you know, we're right. not here to say whether they are or not, but even if they are, people still do not trust Apple like they would trust an influencer. So bring out an influencer who has millions of followers, mm -hmm. let them interview Tim Cook, let them go and talk with engineers. Shoot, let them do the assessment from the ground up, giving just giving them access to, to the, to the yeah. lab and the, and the ecosystem, yeah. and, and let them form their own conclusion. Apple's got to go full kimono, open it up, and then not control the message. Yeah, exactly. Like not control, like they're, they're legal, to, like they, they have to... They, they've got to they've got to completely open up and like tech bloggers, tech influencers, but then also like regular Joes, like just regular folks who are going to impact you know someone's mm -hmm. phone buying decision. Say yes, this is this is I actually validated these claims. Um, what Apple's doing, here's what they are doing, and here's why it actually makes sense, and here's why your stuff is more private on the phone. Yeah, and privacy gets really complex really quick in terms right. of how it's treated, and, and it becomes an advanced topic. So I do think Apple could do more to make the differences between Apple and competitors, whoever those may be in this, in this situation, right. make that more approachable to, to the everyday person. Don't just say, Apple, we're really good at security. I think that's one thing that Verizon did great historically when they would show the coverage map and be like, 
here's our coverage map, here's theirs. So right. what are some I interesting ways that are factually correct and can be checked by a third party? Right. We don't even know where our stuff's leaking. Is it the no. device? Is it the apps? Is it our network? Right. Like, is, is there a difference between Verizon privacy versus AT&T versus Sprint privacy? Who the hell knows? Right. We, I mean, like, this is all so complex. So, like, to have laymen be able to explain it, here's where your stuff gets leaked, or here's where your data gets sold. Right. Here's how you're going to control it. Like, that stuff really matters. Like, what does Apple do with all my Safari search data? Because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't use another browser on my phone, even though I do, I use Google in real life. Or my Chrome, but I you you know yeah. like or not in real life. You know what I mean? On, yeah. a, on a laptop, computer. Um, yeah, but like nobody even knows how this stuff works right. and like where the gaps are. They don't. So Apple's smart yeah. to take it from a high level, try to connect themselves with the with privacy, but you've got to do it in a way that connects with the consumer in 2019, not in the 90s. So you know, from from our perspective, like good work. Good thinking, but it just falls short. So yeah. use use the third parties, make it more approachable for for the average person to be able to understand. And I mean, yeah. continue to take shots at your competitors where it's a, where it's appropriate to to draw <laughs> Kick that. Kick them when they're down. I that's that's just <laughs> that's just smart. So, anyways, that's all we got that's for it. for today. Um, we appreciate you tuning in. And uh, follow yeah, us. Follow us. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. And LinkedIn. Yeah, that too. Yeah, LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. So long from Detroit.